Good evening. Good to see you. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Whether you're here physically or whether you're online, we're glad that you're here. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. With I exalt thee. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. For above all God, I exalt Thee. I exalt Thee. I exalt Thee. Oh. I exalt thee, O Lord. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I Great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names. Name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Name above yes, all things, you are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, how great is our God. Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. 
How great it is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. The door will sing, how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. It's all we'll see how great, how great is our God. Then sing, my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Yes, You are, Lord. Great is our God, hallelujah, worthy of all praise and glory and honor today. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for everybody tonight, all right? Everybody needs a little prayer, needs uplifting, needs to be warm because it's cold outside. Amen. They're leaving me, but that's all right. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your blessings today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for loving us, Lord, for helping us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the rain, Lord. We haven't had no rain for a while, Lord. God, we know that it's needed, Lord, so we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we bring every need to you, Lord God. We bring every person to you tonight, Lord God. You know their needs, Lord. God, we shall pray to you just meet their needs tonight, Lord God. Lord, you'd heal the sick, Lord God. Help, Lord God, those that are down and out and lift them up and give them encouragement, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you'd set the captives free, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's so many things in this world that people are held captive by. But, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you would loose those things, Lord, that have them bound today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and let them go free, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, Lord. Most of all, Lord, for those that are lost, Lord God. Lord, may they come to know you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Pour out your spirit, Lord God, and convict those that are lost tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, may your word, Lord God, speak to us tonight, Lord God. Give us instruction, Lord God, and may we obey in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. I guess that's all I'm singing. Amen. I could sing all night. I could sing all night. All right. Thank you, Lord. Ain't God good? Give us so many blessings, undeserving. That's what we are. Sounds like a song. I see it. Brother Tom, Sister Kay have come in from, from their meeting, and they look like they got all smiles. Oh, really? Did you get registered? You got registered? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Thank the Lord. Glad you're here tonight. We're going to go to a familiar scripture with you, uh, but uh, how many has been shopping yet? Anybody been shopping? Shopping for Christmas? A little bit, yeah? Online? Most people go online now? Yes. I haven't done any shopping. Probably won't do much. No, I never know what to buy. Do you all know what to buy? <laughs> it would be easier if people would give you a list, you know? Amen. I, I don't know what to buy. Is is most men like that? They don't know what to buy. 
He, he did what? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Good, good. So I don't know what to buy for people. Like, I just go shopping and I'm like, nah, they don't want that. No, they don't need that. Yeah, and then and then I walk out of the dollar store and I'm like, I ain't get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. The dollar store that somebody said was now a dollar and a quarter. I don't know if that's true. Is it? It's supposed to do that? Uh, the dollar and a quarter store? <laughs> oh, okay. It's changing. Things are changing, I guess. All right. Well, there's three things that the Lord encourages us to buy. And there's probably more than that, but in this passage of Scripture, there are three things that he encourages us to buy. And this found in Revelation chapter 3 to the Laodicean church. Got your Bibles? Let's see what it says. You, you should know this one by heart. This is the one that gets preached more than probably any of them. And 14 of chapter 3 says, And unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, somebody say he's faithful, and he's true. The beginning of the creation of God. Why did he have to say he's faithful and true? Because there were a lot of false prophets around. There were a lot of false teachings. There was a lot of false people serving false gods. He wanted to know, I'm faithful, and I'm true. Amen. And what I'm about to say, I'm about to say it, hallelujah, for your own good. Amen. Don't you like to hear that? When somebody says this is for your own good, you know you're going to get something, right? Probably something you don't want, but maybe something that you need. I don't know. But he said he, he just wanted them to know, hey, I'm the faithful one and I'm the true witness. Amen. There is no other one like me. Verse, verse 15 says, I know thy works. Look at somebody and say, the Lord knows you. He knows you very well. He knows you when you're working. He knows you when you're asleep. Oh, that's that's a oh that's Santa Claus. Okay, got him, got him mixed up. <laughs> he said, "I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth." Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee. What does he want us to buy? To buy of me. Can't buy this in the store. Can't get it in the, in the dollar store or the $10 store or the big, big department stores. You can't get it. You're going to buy it, you got to get it from Jesus. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, and that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke. Whew. Thank you, Lord. And chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and do what? Repent. 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 Amen. So a man went to the barber shop, getting his hair cut, and he's sitting there talking to the to the barber. Barber. And they're discussing everything, just like you normally do. I went to one the other day. We talked about all kinds of things. Well, he was there talking to him, and and they talked about different things but they got on the subject of god and the haircutting guy said i don't believe that god exists why do you say that asked the customer if god exists why are there so many sick people why are they why are there abandoned children if god exists there should be neither suffering nor pain i can't imagine a loving god who would allow all these things anybody ever heard that before Yes, the customer disagreed, but he didn't respond because he didn't want to start an argument. After he left the barbershop, he saw a man in the street with long, stingy, stringy hair, dirty hair, and untrimmed beard, and he got his answer. He returned to the barbershop, and he said, you know what? I don't believe in barbers. I don't believe they exist. 
Now, how can you say that? Said the barber. I, I just I just worked on you. No, the customer exclaimed, barbers don't exist because if they did, there'd be no people with long hair, or untrimmed beards like the man outside. Oh, but barber do barbers do exist, answered the barber. What happens is people don't come in to me. Exactly, affirmed the customer. God also exists. What happens is people don't go to him and let him help them. Oh, that was good. That was a good answer, right? Huh? Thank you, Lord. Let us go to the Lord and trust in the Lord and believe in the Lord and upon his invitations. Amen. So Jesus saw a people who were not so hot. They were not so hot. Hmm. Jesus said that in the last days, the love of many, in Matthew chapter 24, 12, the love of many shall wax cold. That's a sign of the end times. The love of many shall wax cold. What will they love? Money. But they'll step on people to get it. And they'll turn their back on God to get it. They'll sell their soul to get it. But Jesus said the love of many will wax cold. He's talking about the love of God, their love for God, the love of pleasure is stronger than the love of God. The love of material things is stronger than the love of God. The love of comfort is stronger than the love of God. Come on, church. So the reference to, to that temperature being cold or hot is a, reference to our love it's a reference to our devotion it's a reference to our fervor and our passion and our excitement and our enthusiasm for jesus when he's talking about being cold or hot he said i'd rather for you to be lukewarm or i'd rather that you that you be cold or hot not lukewarm amen we're going to talk about that a little bit and that kind of strange though that he said i'd rather for you to be cold than lukewarm I rather for you to be hot. We understand that. He wants you to be hot and on fire. But why would he want you to be cold? Why would he rather for you to be cold than lukewarm? Y'all asking me? <laughs> the cold represents the godless. The godless. Those that don't believe in God. Those that don't trust in God. Those that are out sinning, doing their own thing. The hot represents those people who are on fire. For God they're loving God they're talking about God all the time they're singing about God all the time amen God is their whole life they're on fire the lukewarm are those people that really haven't made up their mind to serve God all the way they're kind of just serving him part of the way not with their whole heart it's like having that form of godliness in second Timothy chapter 3 but they deny the power of God. Why? why? Why would they do that? The danger of being lukewarm is, is that the lukewarm don't see their need for God. You see, he said there, you said, I am rich, and I don't need anything. And that's what the danger of being lukewarm is, is that really, I don't really have to pray that much because I got everything I need. And then that's so true. When we're on the mountaintop, a lot of times we don't pray like we do when we're in the valley. Because everything's just good, and we just don't, you know, hey, we don't need to pray right now. Huh? But when we get in the valley, we're crying out to God, oh, God, help me, God. Jesus! I did that for that brother. But you remember him? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The danger of being lukewarm is that we don't see our need for God. When you're cold, you know you lost. You know you don't have a chance. You, you know that you're not living right. You know that you're not doing the right thing. When you're cold, you know that you're far away from God. And when you're hot, you know that you're right in the middle or right in the place where God wants you to be. You're right there because you feel that anointing. You see God doing things. But when you're lukewarm, it's like being on your own. I got this. I'm rich. I don't need anything. I can do this myself. I can have church without God. And that's the problem is that there are many churches having church without God. Come on, church. I, don't, I can't have church without God. I don't see no need for it, do you? 
Amen. We need God. We need God in every service that we have. And every time we get together, we need God. Amen. We need God this weekend for that parade. Can't do that parade without God. <laughs> sure can't do it without Sister K. <laughs> Amen. But being that lukewarm is like, well, God, you know, we got it. We can handle this. We can have church. We can sing. We got all the good voices. You know, we're rich. We're rich in talent. We're rich in money. We're rich in everything. I mean, no bacon bridge. Free worship center has some wonderful talent. We're rich in talent, but don't think we don't need God. Amen. We're not rich with money. But God's always provided. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're getting through. We're getting by. Amen. And even more than that, God is so good to us. He's so good to his church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever tasted something and spit it out? Why'd you do that? It was nasty, right? It's just like, ah. And that's the same way God said with those lukewarm people. I'm going to spit them out. I'm just going to throw them up. I, that, 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 that's not a good place to be. It's not a good place to be. Because usually those people that are lukewarm can't hear God. Because they're full of themselves. They're full of the things that they have. And they can't even hear the voice of God. Oh, that's a dangerous place to be. Being lukewarm also robs the gospel of its power. A gospel that you only partially surrender to will not save or deliver you. Amen. He don't want you to be lukewarm because, Lord help us. This don't describe churches today. There's no power. There's no power. I ain't talking about our church. <laughs> there, there's no power. So people get used to that, and they just stay in that. And, and so there's no really uh, faith to believe that God can do the impossible. It, it kind of drains the church of the true gospel, that God can do all things, that God can do anything, that God is a miracle worker all the time, that God can do extraordinary things better than we can imagine or, or, or even we can put in our mind. God does more. It, it, it's a gospel, a lukewarm gospel is a gospel that doesn't work. It has all the right words, has all the right songs, but it has no power. That's a lukewarm. They look good, dress good, sing good, preach good, but they have no anointing. They have no power because they're lukewarm in their love for God. Amen can brag about the things that they do, the things that they have, but they don't brag about God and the things that he did because they can't point to the things that God done. They can't point to the things that God's done. Instead of going home and say, God healed this person today, or God saved that person today, they're going home and say, that was a good service. Brittany sang so pretty. And Mark backed her up just awesome. We go home talking about the things that we did rather than talking about the God that is all-powerful. Amen. Talk about how many people we had in church or how many people we didn't have in church. <laughs> we talk about, you know, all the, all the things, but how many will go home from church talking about God? God did something extraordinary. God did something miraculous. God saved that lost person. God healed that person that was sick. God delivered that person from their bondage. I mean, want to have a talk about that when you leave church. Amen. Amen. But the lukewarm can still brag on the things that they've done, but they have no power. Amen. They become comfortable, and being comfortable is hard to break out of. Anybody got an easy chair at home? And sometimes when you know you ought to get up and go to church, you're like, oh, this feels so good. You know? Oh, I think I'll just watch the pastor online tonight. <laughs> My easy chair. <laughs> oh. oh, I wasn't talking about y'all. 
<laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, no. Hey, if the shoe fits. <laughs> If you now, if you're home because you're sick, or if you're home for some other reason because you got to do something, but if you're home just because you're comfortable, then you might be lukewarm. Come on. If you could have gotten to church tonight, but you decided, ah, it just feels too good here. It's too cold out there. Come on. Amen. Comfortable. It's hard to break out of that. If you ever miss church for a, for a few weeks or something, you start getting comfortable missing church. Amen. And it's hard to hard to get back into it because it's so comfortable. Amen. You get to sleep a little later on Sunday mornings. Come on, church. How many people don't come to Sunday school? I'm here at Sunday school, but I'm usually here right time the bell rings or few minutes later. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just, just too comfortable to lay in the bed a few more minutes or drink a little another cup of coffee. Or, uh, boy, this wasn't what I planned tonight, but, hey, you know, get, us a, get out to Sunday school. Hallelujah. Amen. We got too comfortable, you know. Lukewarmness suits what the nature of man. We just want to be comfortable, do as less as we can do, and just, you know, be. But that's not what God's looking for. God's looking for somebody that's sold out to him, that gives their 100%. Hallelujah. If they had 110%, they'd give that. Amen. Amen. The world is always at peace. With a lukewarm church. Come to church, you ain't got to worry about nobody stepping on your toes because we don't do that around here. Right? I ain't talking about us because <laughs> we probably done stepped on some already. <laughs> Amen. Come on, church. The, the world is, is okay with a lukewarm church. Don't start preaching about hell. They don't want to hear that. Amen. Don't don't start preaching about sin. Hallelujah. Just be lukewarm. Just be okay with everything and just enjoy everything. But don't get serious with God. When you get serious with God, things have to change. When you get serious with God, things have to change. Amen. If not, If you're not changing any, <laughs> if nothing's changing about you, you might want to examine yourself and see. And the Bible tells us to do that. It says, examine, our, examine ourselves, make sure we're in the faith. Amen. But the world's okay with a lukewarm church because they can just come in, sit there, and be comfortable. Don't have to worry about nobody stepping on their toes, nobody talking about their sin, nobody talking about a hell. The church is okay with lukewarmness. I mean, the church and the world. But we're not, are we? The child of God, the true child of God, the one that's serious with God is not, not okay with lukewarm. Amen. And the church should not be either. Jesus don't have nothing to do with a lukewarm church. He said he'd spew them out of his mouth. And then when you get down to verse 20 of this thing, it says Jesus is standing out there knocking on the door. Come on. He's standing out there knocking on the door. Why is he standing outside knocking on the door? Because he don't go to no lukewarm church. He's knocking on the door. But if you let him come in, things will change. If you let him come in, things are going to change, and most people are not comfortable with that. Come on. Most people are not comfortable with change. But, boy, don't you want it to be changed to be more like Christ? Don't you want more of the power of God than what we've seen? Amen. So he talks about this, and he gives three, uh, three things that he wanted you to buy to be the remedy for your lukewarmness. 
He said, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich. Didn't they already say they was rich? Huh? What's that gold? He said, I, I want you to buy gold. That's something that is precious, something that is valuable. But it's something that's been refined, something that's been through the heat, been through the fire, come out pure. So he said, I want you to buy me gold. And, and the, the price of buying that gold is your life being refined, your life being changed you know, from darkness to light. Amen. From old habits to a new life. Come on, church. I've been refined in the fire. He said, I want you to buy this gold that I got. It's not like the world's gold. It's more valuable than that. It's refined that makes you, hallelujah, like Christ. Praise God. Not comfortable. When God begins to work on you, you're usually not comfortable. Huh? If you're comfortable with yourself, then <laughs> you might want to get on and pray and say, God, change me, Lord. Help me. Amen. He said, buy of me gold refined in the fire. Amen. Gold. God's goal is what really true riches is. Christ, uh, Christ's goal speaks of real value in Job chapter 22 and verse 25. It symbolizes God's godly character in Job 23 and 10. It's a noble building material for your life in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. It requires intense refining in Proverbs 17 and 3, and it represented perfected faith in 1 Peter 1 and 17. And only way to get it is to get it through Jesus Christ. He said, I wish, wish you would buy from me something that's of value, something that's real. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of things out there that will shine like gold, but they're not gold. Oh, come on. There's a lot of things out there that's an imitation. But Jesus said, I got the real thing. I got the real thing. And he said that before Coke come out with it. Amen. <laughs> so buy from him. If you're, going, if you're going shopping this week, hallelujah, or tonight, buy something that's of value, that'll change your life, and that'll, that'll get, keep you going and doing the things of God. Amen. He talks about that white. White robe. Sister Craybomb used to love to sing that song about the white robe. In Revelation 19 and 8, the white robes people wear in heaven are said to represent the righteousness of the saints. But God says our righteousness is as filthy rags in Isaiah 64 and 6. So where, where do we get the righteousness that he's talking about to wear these robes? Where do we get it? But get it through Jesus Christ. And he's the only righteous one, really. Amen. And we're righteous because of him. Praise the Lord. I can't, I can't be righteous in myself. I can be good. I can be good morally. But I can't be righteous without Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Lord said in Isaiah 1 and 18, he says, Come now and come when? And let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, not Clemson, crimson, they shall be as wool. <laughs> Amen. We need to trust in the Lord. Let him wash away our sins and clothe us in his righteousness. Amen. He talked about an ISAB. So to buy that gold, <coughs> to buy that white robe, to take the ISAB. Amen that anointing that we need. Hallelujah. To be spiritually blind is to be in darkness, un unregenerate, without the knowledge of God. Proverbs 29, 18 says, without a vision, the people perish. <coughs> Y'all still here? Without a vision, the people perish. You're talking about the ISAM that he's talking about. He's talking about that vision. 
for the things of God. Hallelujah. And the NIV version of Proverbs 29, 18 says, the people cast off restraints. Do, do you have a vision of what God wants to do in and your life? The NIV version of Proverbs you know 29, the 18 from? says, the you people get it cast off restraints. Do, do you have a preaching. vision of what God wants to so do he's in your word life? The NIV Amen. version of Proverbs you know 29, 18. It's been said that no man or woman lives preachers. beyond their vision. Do, do you have a vision of what God wants to do? The bigger your vision, the greater your vision. It's been said that no man or woman lives beyond their vision. Do you have a vision of what God Helen Keller. The bigger your vision, the greater your vision. It's been said that no man or woman lives beyond their vision. Do you have a what would be worse than being born blind? blind. She responded, once you have sight without the vision, what was that? That's pretty good. Do you you have a vision of what God? Helen Keller, what would be worse than being born blind? Be honest tonight here or watching on Facebook or those that will watch it later on. I'm going to be honest and say I've been lukewarm. I've been lukewarm. I haven't given it my all. I haven't given it my all. And you can tell if you're not giving it your all, you're comfortable. Just doing the least. But that's not good enough for God. He said, I'd rather for you to be cold. That way you know you're lost. I'd rather for you to be hot and on fire. But the lukewarm is a dangerous place to be. Get on fire for God. Amen. Give your life to Jesus. If you're cold, you're lost. Repent. And that's what he said, didn't he? Repent. Repent. He stands at the door and knocks. If you'll open the door, he'll come in. Amen. If you'll let him in, he'll come in. If you're lost, if you're cold, give your life to Jesus. If you're straight away and you know, you know you're not living what you should live and doing the things that God wants you to do. It's time to repent. Turn back to Jesus. Hallelujah. Get on fire for God again. Amen. Repent. Repent. If you look warm, boy, you need a revival. Because only a, an anointed revival is probably going to convict you that you're going to listen to. Amen. We need the anointing of God to convict the lukewarm and get them back on fire for God. Hallelujah. I heard some, somebody asked me the other day, they, they said, uh, have, has everybody come back for, to church since the COVID thing? i like, pretty much everybody at Bacon's Bridge. There's still some that, you know, out there. Are, they said, well, the problem with some of the churches is that most of the people have not come back to church and, and they don't even watch it online because they got comfortable staying at home. Hallelujah. Lord, help us. Help the church to get back on fire for God. Fill the pews up again. Amen. If you're not coming to church, you've been out for a while, you better come back. We still got a seat for you. Hallelujah. It misses you. And we miss you. Get back to church. We, we're glad that people watch online. I, I usually go back and look to see what people said or look for prayer requests or look how, how they said the preacher preached a good sermon and all. <laughs> Stepped on my toes or something like that. Hallelujah. I'm looking to see what you're saying. But listen, it's time for everybody to get back to church. And let's get on fire for God. Hallelujah. Let's finish what God gave us to do because he's coming back. Amen. Let's finish what God's given us to do. Hallelujah. As a people, 2022 is coming and we already got a theme, but I ain't going to tell you now. <laughs> Wouldn't be right, would it? I might have to tell Sister Kay because she's going to have to get us some new banners or something. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Boy. Wake up, church. The scripture even says that. Wake thou that are asleep. 
Rise from the dead. Wake up, church. Don't be lukewarm. Don't get comfortable. Get out of that comfort zone. Come back to God. Come back to church. Let's have revival in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. How many would admit, though, you haven't been on fire for God? If if you can admit that, that's a big step. Amen. You can repent. You can repent. He said, I'm rich, is what they said. I'm rich in need of nothing. So untrue. You need Jesus. You need his power. You need the anointing. Boy, we need we need something. You know, we live in a time where doctors are confused, where doctors are dumbfounded. They have all the knowledge in, that they can have, but they don't know how to solve a lot of the problems that we have. Anybody find that true? Amen. We need Jesus. Hallelujah. Got financial counselors and people like that. Hallelujah. That are, that they can tell you all kinds of things, but they can't solve your problem. The scripture says, My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, according to the riches of, of heaven. Amen. Amen. This world does not have the answer. The answer is in Jesus Christ. They got some good things out there. I, I think doctors do good works, but they're limited. Counselors do good work, but they're limited. But there is no limit on Jesus. We need to come back and love him. Hallelujah. Depend on him. Trust in him. Lord, we need the fire of God to fall in our lives again, to fall in our churches again. We need the fire of God to stir people up. Hallelujah. We need the miracles of God. And you can't get it if you're lukewarm. And you're comfortable with what you got. Amen. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you all come on up here and let's all pray together, okay? You can pray with us out there too. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We were looking at some, we were looking at chairs and looking at pews, and I showed Terry a picture. I'm like, why don't we get something like this? And it was the ones without the, without the cushions and stuff. She's like, that would be terrible. I'm like, yeah. No wonder people stayed in the altar. The chairs wasn't comfortable. <laughs> huh? Huh? We try to make everybody comfortable, right? Because we're going to get some new chairs over there. They're going to be the nicest things ever. Hallelujah. And people are like, I ain't getting up from this chair. Hallelujah. I ain't going down to no altar. Come on, church. We've, we've done everything to make people comfortable. Come on. And I, that, That's right. <laughs> it's the preacher's fault. <laughs> huh? Yeah, a pillow would be nice. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, no, it's nice to have all that stuff. But, boy, wouldn't you rather have the power of God Amen. if you had to sit on sit on the floor? Would you trade that pew to sit on the floor to have the power of God? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Boy, we try so much to make people comfortable, make people happy. But what we need to do is pray, God, we need your power, your convicting power, saving power. Hallelujah. Lord, we need that more than anything. Stir and power. Amen. We need the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Stir us up, Lord. Stir us up. Praise the Lord. Some of you get uncomfortable now. You're like ready to go back to that pew, ain't you? Get up out of that easy chair and stand up and worship the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Boy, don't you want to do something great for God? Not because you want to do something great, but because you want God to do something great. Amen. Because God can do what you can't do, but he can use you to do it. Amen. You can't do it, but God can use you to do it. You just give yourself over to him completely and fully. Amen.
Thank you, Father, for your blessings tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. We don't want to be lukewarm, Lord. God, we want to be on fire for you, Lord God. And, Lord, we want to, Lord, share the word of God with fire and passion, Lord God. And zeal, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to share your word, Lord God. Hallelujah, that it will touch people's heart, Lord God. It will convict them of their sins, Lord. Convict them of their slothfulness, Lord. Convict them of their laziness, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Get them back. Lord, to where they need to be in you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord, they'll desire, Lord, to come and feel what we feel here tonight. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name, Lord God. Send down your power, Lord God, among your people, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Give us revival, Lord God. We can't get revival in our easy chair. Hallelujah. We got to get up out of our comfort zone. Hallelujah. Cry out to God. Hallelujah. And begin to do the works of God again in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord. Glorify you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't let it be said of us that we're lukewarm. Lord, we don't want to be spewed out of your mouth, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, tonight, Lord, for a church that loves you, Lord, that cares for you, Lord God. Lord, but we thank you tonight, Lord God, that we're not where we want to be, Lord God. We want to be even more, Lord God, than what we are today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us to have, Lord God, your anointing with us every day, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord, that we can help the lost, Lord, to find you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We pray for everyone at home, Lord God, those that are sick, Lord God, those that are having troubles or problems, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you would touch them and they'd feel your spirit and your power that we feel here in this place, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, that power that breaks every yoke of bondage in the name of Jesus. Praise your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord, today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sister K says, put both feet in. <laughs> Don't shake it too hard. <laughs> it might fall apart. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you on Sunday and uh, make your plans to go to parade. It starts at 2 o'clock, and we will be in it. Amen. So come on and go with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen and amen.